Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, such a pleasure to uh, have you with us this afternoon uh, uh, on this uh, topic or this webinar topic, communication and relationship management. Uh, we're going to be together for an hour. My name is Jamal Saeed, and I welcome you. I want to thank you um, to, uh, for being with us this afternoon. Uh, I want to welcome Abdullah, Asma, Talal, Manisha, uh, Mashallah, Jad, Jude is with us as well. And uh, of course, uh, let me see who else is there. I hope I did not miss anybody else. I think that we have a few people. That's great. So good to have you guys. Uh, Badr is as well is with us. So thank you guys. If I missed your name, please forgive me. I am so excited and happy to have you with us. Listen, it's an interesting topic. And I want to make sure that um, I cover it. Uh, so um, I'm going to go ahead and dive in. Uh, expectations, uh, we're going to be talking about this in a minute. I'm going to zoom through, or you can say zap through, the first few slides about the company and uh, who we are. But um, after that, uh, uh, it is a participative uh, webinar in the sense I'm going to ask you some questions just to you know, keep you uh, uh with us excited and everything so we're going to do some questions just you know uh, pitch in with your answers so again my name is jamal saeed i work for market training and consulting and um, a bit of a background about the company i'll start with that and um, uh, let's go ahead and dive in so um, please note my email my email is jsaeed at merck Dot com. The reason I say that is simply because toward the end of the presentation, as many of you might be, you know, getting ready to to uh, uh, leave the webinar, sometimes you forget my email or the email. Uh, typically, what I do is I uh, send a copy, a PDF copy of the presentation. I just want to make sure that if in case the presentation um, uh, earned your, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, your satisfaction, uh, you, 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 you deserve a copy. So all I'm saying here is uh, send an email to jsaeed at merck.com. And uh, in case I forget, um, just say, Jamal, listen, can you send me a copy of the presentation? And I will shoot it to you in PDF format. All right. Let's go ahead and start. I don't want to, you know, um, waste lots of time on uh, introduction, but before I do that, before I do that, I want to make sure that you guys are okay. I know that the COVID-19 has been quite a, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has been quite a stress and pressure on our life. I hope that you guys are doing well. I hope your families are doing well. And uh, believe me, we're all in this together. Um, I am doing this webinar from uh, Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Um, in many ways, we are blessed to be in this wonderful country. Uh, the leaders, I believe, have done a wonderful, wonderful job in guiding us through this uh, unprecedented situation. Uh, and uh, I give them 20 out of 10 for the wonderful work they have done. So, uh, and, you know, we're not out of the tunnel completely, uh, but very soon, inshallah, we will be. And uh, wherever you are, if you're uh, calling from Saudi, uh, 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 one of those wonderful countries in Africa or uh, in the Middle East from Lebanon or Jordan, wherever you are, I hope that uh, things are easing up and uh, we go back to a normal life. I just wanted to say that because there's no way we can ignore an, a, a pandemic that has impacted our life in such a big way. And in many ways, come to think of it, what made a difference for us in this pandemic in many ways was the ability of our leaders to communicate and build relationships. And this is why I believe this particular topic is at the heart of humanity, of human relations. I believe wholeheartedly that if you are a good communicator and you build relationship, relationships well, you are a successful person. And uh, I hope that whatever advice I provide in this webinar, uh, you are able to take it to heart. Keep working on yourself. Always work on yourself. Don't discount yourself. Always work. Improve yourself. Make sure that, you know, bring the best out of you. 
And if there's one thing I learned in this pandemic is to work on myself. Believe it or not, uh, this pandemic gave me a chance to explore so many things. And I, I tell you, I developed certain skills that I never thought I have the time. But, you know, there's always a silver lining for things. So here we go. Now, um, as uh, I said, I'm going to zip through these first few slides about the company and everything. You can know about Merck through our website, uh, Merck.com, Merck www.merck.com. Go to our website. You can see all of this wonderful information, who we are, where we started, where we are today. We are in Dubai, in uh, uh, Business Bay, Bay Square, wonderful place. Come and visit us. We'd love to see you here. Um, uh, of course, if the uh, situation allows, um, uh, I think at this stage you have to wear a mask. But other than that, come over. We'll be more than happy to share with you our offices. This is our values. These are our values, our mission, our vision. Again, they're available on the website. And, uh, uh, and um, then this is the portfolio of products that we have. We have tremendous amount of portfolios. Um, I tell you one thing. I didn't work for Merck um, uh, except in the past eight years. I don't come from traditionally, I'm not a trainer. But when I joined this company, I was impressed with the amount of, of content knowledge they have. And we managed to increase our portfolio offering from 200 to 300 and more. So every day we introduce some new topics. And um, I hope that you always visit our website, attend our training. We also offer virtual for virtual learning. So uh, hopefully things will open up. We go back to face-to-face. -to -face. We go back to our capability to offer courses publicly. But oh, we also offer public courses from a virtual learning perspective. So check us out. Check our pricing. I hope they match your need. And I tell you, uh, there's nothing better than developing yourself. Um, a little bit about myself uh, here. Um, my name is Jamal Said, as I mentioned, and um, I'm a partner at Merck since August 2012. Um, I'm an engineer, but never practiced engineering, electrical engineering, never practiced it. So I, uh, I won't say that I wasted four years of my life. On the contrary, electrical engineering degree has taught me so many things. So I worked in the computer industry quite a bit. So I would say that I kind of practice my technical skills there. I also have an MBA. I'm pursuing my DBA, my doctorate in business administration. I hope I can do it. I'm a firm believer in always developing yourself. I worked for some wonderful companies. Um, from Pepsi to Sun Microsystem to Cisco. I learned a lot in, in these companies and uh, whether on leadership, uh, management, uh, uh, growing a business, what have you. And uh, when I joined Merck, I joined uh, to share with people like yourself uh, the, uh, you know, what I have learned in, in, in 24 years in the corporate world from strategy, planning, leadership, people management, development. So this is a bit about myself. I'm an avid um, cyclist, I love cycling, uh, and um, uh, and I believe that you have to stay in shape, uh, and because this is very very important today. So uh, uh, now let's dive into our uh, webinar. The objectives of the webinar, of course, uh, I like to share with you a few things. Um, first of all, then the role of um, of trust in building a successful relationship. The second thing I'd like to share with you is how to analyze stakeholders and the power interest matrix. Also, I would like to share with you the role of context. Um, it's very important to understand the value of context in your relationship. And then, of course, uh, how to uh, make sure that uh, you pursue relationship opportunities that bring value and achieve results, develop and manage um, uh, and nurture relationships from transactional to transformational. And of course, we need to broaden our network. I mean, I mean, this is something I, I advise you to always explore, always broaden your network uh, because the life is, uh, uh, is more exciting when you have networks of people. And of course, I advise you to develop the right kind of network, okay? So always make sure you think strategically about your networks. Um, a quick word about our courses. We always support them with blended learning. So any course you take with us, they, we back it up by another course that you can take online on your own. So we give you material uh, or access to material that you can develop on your own. So 
Um, let's go ahead and start. So first of all, what I would like um, uh, to do is uh, starting with the relationship and the trust factor. And I'd like to ask you the following question. So as you can see, we're going into the interaction. Human relations are not important in the workplace. Uh, true or false? So let me see. Let me see. So here's survey. I'm going to go into survey and I'm going to go to question mark number one. All right. So please go ahead and vote. Um, the human relations, okay, are not important in the workplace. All right. We, we see that we have some, wow, fantastic response. You guys are on, are very active. This is amazing. Well done. I see some very strong uh, responses. I'm going to give, you know, those of you who need 30, maybe 15 seconds, because, you know, I want to make sure that I finish my the slides. Uh, you are here to answer service, of course, but you want to get something out of this webinar. So here we go. 11 out of 14. That's very, very good. And that's 12 out of 14. Fantastic. So uh, for those of you who did not vote, please forgive me. I'm going to end the voting right now. I'm going to share the results. Okay. So uh, I hope you did well. So one, a couple of you said true. Human relations are not important in the workplace, but majority said false. Uh, probably you misread the situation. Human relations are not probably you saw it as are. And that's why you answered true. So I'll give you that much. And in reality, human relations are so important in the workplace and outside the workplace. So well done. And here we go. So now we go back to the presentations. So the thing about it, my dear friends, is that human relations, okay, make a difference, a big difference in the workplace. And it is a basic element, factor in your career success. If you know how to build relations and you know how to communicate, you know, it makes a difference in your career. And who's more important than you on this call? You are the most important element, person on this call. So why don't you pay attention to yourself? Always develop your communication skills, and always develop your relationships. So the better your ability to relate to others, the more likely to develop professionally and personally. So it is very important that, no, you know, relationships are funny. Communications is an interesting topic. And what happens is that sometimes in the workplace there are conflicts and you have to manage these conflicts. And trust me, based on my experience, how you manage situations in the workplace reflects on you directly. So it's very important that you manage the conflicts, manage the relationships, how you communicate your thoughts and ideas makes a whole difference in your life. And as I said, who is more important than you? So make sure that you are focusing on yourself in these two areas. Of course, there are many soft skills that we can develop, but these two areas, how to manage relationships and how to communicate, they are foundational in my, in my opinion. So that being said, if we want to define a human relations, we can say that human relations as relations with or between people, particularly in the workplace or professional setting. And why do I say workplace and professional setting? Is because we spend most of our time at work. Come to think of it. I mean, seven hours of our day, eight hours of our day. Some of you work 12 hours in, at work. And bless you for those of you who do. And I ask you to maybe, you know, improve your, um, uh, your situation because 12 hours, I think, is too much. But nonetheless, nonetheless, it is how you uh, work these relations between people, particularly in the workplace and professional setting. And this is very critical in my opinion. So that being said, business demand for stronger human relations. Come to think of it, when you are in your workplace, the stronger the relationships, the better, the more positive they are. The productivity in the workplace goes up. There is a lots of focus on human relations in the workplace, how we listen to each other, how we talk with each other, how we develop relationships with each other. Why? Because businesses know at the end of the day, if we have stronger human relations, we have, notice what it is, better business decisions. Employee motivation goes up. Healthy workplace. You say, Jamal, healthy, what do you mean? Well, I tell you one thing. One of the basic 
causes of people not happy in the workplace is the workplace stress. Stress sometimes doesn't come only from working a lot at, uh, in, in your job. It sometimes comes from relations, the way that your manager talks to you or people talk to you. So it's very important. L listen, guys, there's a very intricate relationship that you have to manage here. Rapid changing business environment. Man, tell me about rapid changing. I mean, the COVID-19 comes as, as a big surprise for us. Three months back, I was able to go anywhere I want, and now I'm stuck at home. And this happened all, you know, very quickly for us. So business environment is changing. And then, of course, higher performance and productivity, improvement in employee retention, team support and collaboration, innovation, creativity. So you can imagine why human relations is so important. And I just counted eight, and there are so many reasons why this is an important topic. So human relations, companies are focusing a lot on human relations in the workplace because of these things. But more importantly, there are many benefits. What are the benefits that I can reap from business? Whether you are a small business owner or a big business owner, what can I get? Look at this. Improved work and collaboration. Teams collaborate better with each other because they talk to each other differently. They communicate better. They build strong relationships improved employee morale you feel better you feel more confident you feel happier employee retention people don't just leave the organization they like to stay there because they are happy there and of course increased productivity nothing increased productivity better than a happy employee and this is why these four benefits companies will focus on small or large this is very important and successful companies they know how important this is so that being said Imagine this the following situation. Have you ever worked with somebody? He might be or she might be extremely, extremely, extremely smart. But when you come to them and talk to them, they basically, you know, don't want to work with you. They alienate you with their approach. They shout at you or they become angry or mad or something. It happens all the time. Why? Because the company is a conglomeration of characters. That is why sometimes you don't have people that act and behave like you. You have different shades in the company of people and individuals. Now, this particular person who basically doesn't like to work with people and he's very much on his own or her own, okay, is not thinking beyond themselves. And I'm focusing on this particular point. Why? Because it's very important to remember that when we develop communication and relationship management skills, you have to go beyond yourself. So sometimes a person who's not able to go beyond themselves, that's how they behave, okay? So a person who is able to go beyond themselves, they show empathy. They are very much into accountability. They are able to innovate and create better. Create better, why? Because I might be a, a, a loner, uh, somebody who's introvert, and I'm very creative, that's great. But have you ever had a situation where when two people or three people work together on, a, on, on an idea, it becomes even better? Higher productivity, of course. Better teamwork, stronger decision making, true personal growth. All of these are very important of thinking beyond yourself. So I would like to ask you a favor. Whenever you are, you know, reflecting on how, how did my day go today, think about it from did I, was I able to think beyond myself or was I much, very much focusing on my needs, on the me here? And this is, this, I always ask myself this question and I call it self-reflection. That is why, that is why these four areas is a progression for you. When you are uh, developing throughout your life, you start seeing this progression. First of all, through your experience and your interaction, you start seeing beyond yourself. You start saying, okay, I'm trying to see why this person is behaving like this. And from this learning on from your experience, you start growing beyond yourself. What does it mean? This means that you start adopting new habits that makes you better. And then when you grow beyond yourself, you start giving beyond yourself. You become a giver. You give advice, you help others. And when you are a giver, you give beyond yourself in a very good way, in a positive way. You start attracting people, the right people toward you.
So as you can see, some of the people in society, they leave an impression on us because they have managed to go through this, these four stages in their life. At the beginning, they saw beyond themselves, and then they grew beyond themselves, and then they gave beyond themselves, and then they gathered beyond themselves. So don't sell yourself short. You are a wonderful person, and always work on yourself, and make sure that you give back at the end of the day, because this is what society is all about. So this is very important, thinking beyond yourself. And that is why successful businesses, those companies that succeed, they have strong relationships. It's a strong relationship between employers and employees, between staff and management, between customers and staff. You see, when I am a happy individual at a company, I reflect that happiness toward the customer I'm dealing with. So I serve them better toward the stakeholders. So it's very important you understand how important trust is because this is where trust comes in. We have trust does not come automatic. And this is very important. I have to highlight this particular point. Trust is not something that, you know, you wish for it and it just shows up. You have to work hard at, at, at earning trust. But to get to trust, you have to develop relationships and you have to communicate well. This is very essential. So at the foundation of relationship is a trust. But the relationship to develop, you have to communicate with people. You have to develop relationship. And then trust come. When trust is there, the relationship is much stronger. And then you start developing consensus, agreements. And then all of a sudden you feel that, listen, we are moving forward much, much faster than before. Of course. So that being said, trust is very important. And in any relationship, the way that you communicate and you build relationships helps in the trust formation. Because if a workplace is able to foster a strong sense of trust, notice what happens. Look at the benefits. First of all, productivity goes up. Morale goes up. The working effectively as teams rather than individuals. And then, of course, time is, re is reduced because you take faster decisions. I can trust you that you're going to do the job rather than approaching you from a doubt perspective. I don't doubt you. I trust you. So things are moving a lot faster. So you see, this is very important. And so at the heart of strong communication, when we develop communication relationship properly, trust comes along. So we already know then that relationships are important in the workplace. We already mentioned that already. However, there are, you know, what type of relationships evolve among the staff makes quite a difference in the formation of the desired culture. So when you develop a culture in a company, it's based on how we work with each other. So do you want to have a positive relationship as the foundation of your company culture or a forced relationship? Now, you might ask me, Jamal, what are you talking about? What do you mean by positive relationship and forced relationship? I'll give you an example. Have you ever been in a forced relationship where you have to greet somebody even though you don't like them? You have to say hello to your boss even though you don't trust them. Uh, you have to do something because your boss said so because he has the authority or she has the authority. You see, that is a forced relationship. A forced relationship is an interesting concept. We don't, we don't think it is... Uh, we don't like forced relationships in a, in a work environment. We want positive relationship. I want to do something because Abd I like Abdullah, I trust Abdullah. I want to do something for Manisha because she is a good person. I trust her. You see the difference? You see positive relationship versus forced relationship. These two are very important. And that's why when you join companies and you decide to join a company, these kind of relationships show up. Is this a forced relationship culture or a positive relationship culture? So that being said, there's a big difference between positive relationship and forced relationship. And I would like you to always push toward the positive relationship because the positive relationship, uh, they engage on trust. They engage on mutual respect, on mindfulness, on welcoming diversity, on open communication. These are key characteristics of open communication. And you know what? You know, it's amazing. During this COVID-19, what did you react to, honestly? We reacted to the positive message. We reacted to the positive relationships because we felt that 
there's a mutual respect. That's why we love this place where we are in the United Arab Emirates because they respected, they were mindful of the people. They welcomed ideas, open communication. They didn't hide anything here. And that is why people pulled together. They said, you know what? I want to help. I want to do this. I want to do that. While when you talk about forced relationships, we have a different story. There's no trust or a little bit. And then, of course, the boundaries are not respected. Of course, it's a blame culture. You did this. It's your fault. And, and, and you know, you spend time blaming more than you do work. And then unhealthy communication. People shouting at each other, using the wrong words, using the wrong phrases. Selfish needs, me before the company. Imbalance of power. You feel that somebody is forcing, exerting power on you. Contempt. I don't like it. I hate this place. And fear of retribution. Of course, when you have all this negativity, people can only think of retribution or retaliation. So you see the difference between these two. So at the heart of proper communication and relationship, you have, you know, this is, this is foundational. So if you develop the right communication relationship, you are bound to end up with a positive relationship. Think of your image. How would you like people to perceive you? Now, that being said, how about relationship and communication? Now, here comes our next question. I hope you are ready for it. So here we go. Pathos is about making an emotional connection. Let me see. Let me see how many people are going to answer this one correctly. Okay. So are we okay here? And uh, stop. Did I stop here? Close this one. Yeah, close. So let me go back to the survey. And question number two. Here we go. Are you ready? Pathos is about making an emotional connection. Let's see. Let's see how many people are going to respond. Wow, this is fantastic. This is great. Excellent interaction, you guys. I'm so proud of you. Hmm. Okay, very good. I'll give you another 15 seconds just to make sure that everybody is able to participate. Thank you all for being with us today. And I know I'm so happy that you are with us this afternoon and I hope you find it useful. All right. Okay, another five seconds. Come on, send in your answer. All right, so now I'm gonna end the voting and please forgive me if I stopped it before you wanted to, simply because I wanted to make sure that I cover the topic and I let you go home and think about communication and relationship, huh? All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna share the results. I think you guys uh, did fantastically, fantastically well, okay? So yes, it is true, it is true. And for the person who answered false, you probably didn't know what pathos is, so I don't blame you, but I'll explain pathos in a minute. Pathos is about making an emotional connection. That's so true. So let me close this one. Let me go back to my slide and then, let me explain this one. Have you heard of Aristotle? I am sure you did. He is a very famous Greek philosopher and still considered one of those intellectual figures highly respected from Western civilization. So this Greek philosopher, he said that in order to be a great communicator, you have to take care of the ethos, the pathos, and the logos. I may have lost you here. Why don't I help you a little bit with explaining what these three concepts are? What is ethos? Ethos is your credibility. That is the reason people believe what you're saying. Aha! You see, at the heart of communication, why should I believe this person? But what about pathos? Pathos is making the emotional connection. It's that the reason people believe that what you are saying will matter to them. It's not to him or her. Will it matter to you what I'm saying? Reaching out the emotions. So when you're communicating and building relationships, it's very important we take care of the credibility. The second part is making sure the emotional connection exists. 
But the third part is logic, logos, the mode of appealing to the sense of reason. So have you heard the uh, phrase, you have to reach to the hearts and minds? You see? So first of all, you as a credible person, credible means that believable. You have to reach to the heart, which is the pathos, and the logos, which is the mind. So whenever you're reaching out, you're talking to people, building relationships, don't forget these elements. That's very, very critical. It's at the heart of communication. We call them the three elements of communication. So that is why it's very important, you know, you keep these three things in mind. So, however, whenever you talk, sometimes I, it surprises me how people come across so disorganized. You might say, what do you mean by the organization? I don't mean organization, organizing your desk, organizing your clothes. Even though that is part of organization, and I tell you, it is important. Because when you organize yourself, you find things easy. But I'm talking about organizing your thoughts and ideas. You have to organize your thoughts and ideas so that you are able to express yourself better. And that is why successful people, whether CEOs, doctors, sales executives, inventors, those who are able to impact and get their ideas across, they are the ones who organize their thoughts. And they are able to use organization skills to make sure they become successful. So it is very important you organize your thoughts. Organizing your thoughts is an important element in communicating well. And when you communicate well, you build relationship better. You become more credible. You come across as trustworthy. So that is why it is very important that you organize yourself. There are certain principles, okay, that you have to, you know, take into consideration. And believe it or not, if you are a manager, you, you know what I'm talking about. Because organizing impacts all other functions. Whether you are a planner, influencing, controlling, if you don't organize well, all the other three fall into you know, fall into uh, 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 into chaos. You organize yourself, you plan better. You organize yourself, you lead and influence better. And you organize yourself, you control better. So even from a business perspective, it is very important you organize your thoughts. And it's an essential part of communication and building relationships. So that being said, organizing in its simplest form is a process where you organize your thoughts and ideas and you come up with priorities in your life. And you give each thought its necessary amount of time. You might say, Jamal, are you talking about time management? To some extent. To some extent, I'm talking about time management. Okay? And then you make sure that you give the right priority its resources. And eventually, because of this organization of your thoughts, and you are impacting relationship better, you increase productivity, you reduce your stress, you deliver your task, and you meet deadlines. Let me tell you why. Because if I am under stress and I'm disorganized, I don't deliver on my productivity. I start shouting at people, leave me alone. I want to deliver this. I don't have time for you. You reduce stress. You go home and your wife or your son or your daughter say, well, why are you angry? Well, because, you know, sometimes we feel the stress. Of course, delivering tasks. At the heart of every project, everything we do, there are certain tasks that we have to do. And, of course, meeting deadlines. So, if we organize our thoughts, we can communicate better and build relationship better. We can delegate better. We can seek help better. And it impacts these four things that I mentioned here. So, that with that, I like to mention that in addition to communication, relationships, um, uh, it, it comes assertiveness. Because you might say, but what does assertiveness have to do with with relationship and and communication? Well, assertiveness is at the heart of communication. Now, many people uh, mix between assertiveness and aggressiveness. Please, let's make sure this is understood today. Assertiveness is a very nice approach, very polite, but doesn't mean that you are on the soft side of things and neither are you on the aggressive side of things. It is a very interesting mid medium. You are in the middle somewhere where you are able to achieve your goals, but at the same time, 
you know, you are able to help others. You might lose a couple of times, but you don't lose all the time. And I don't want to win all the time. You see, that's assertiveness is essential in our, in our, uh, our life today. And an assertive approach helps you build relationships better and communicate better. So we can get things done if we are assertive. And of course, we must ensure that we are not aggressive. You see, some people see assertiveness as aggressive, which is not. I still can be extremely polite and get things done with the help of others. So whatever has been said has to state, you have to state it clearly and as a matter of fact, not in an abusive manner. You cannot boss people around and say, I'm assertive. No, that you're being aggressive. But if you state it clearly and a matter of fact, this means that you back up what you're saying with facts and a bit of emotions, man, are you assertive? And I want you to read more about it. But here are some tips about being assertive. Why one must be assertive? Because as a professional, and you know, mashallah, you are all professionals, you have to deal with the people around you. But nothing comes without challenges. So sometimes a person doesn't want to work with you. Sometimes a person is a bit lazy. Sometimes a person is a bit... So you have to manage these interesting intricacies in the workplace. But you have to get things done. The assertive approach helps you with that. Okay? It helps you deal with different kinds of people. At the same time, okay, your views may not be seen um, uh, as acceptable all the time. But I tell you one thing. It can help you get your ideas across. It can help get your ideas in a very, very, very good way. All right? So that being said, um, I, um, by the way, I want to thank all of you for your uh, feedback, and that's great. Keep them coming, guys. Now, so what are the advantages of being assertive? Well, one thing for sure is you are able to get your way most of the time, not all the time. All the time means that you're ultra aggressive. But I don't want you to lose all the time. I want you to achieve most of what you want, most. You are become more convincing and you become more emphatic. It means that you feel with others. You can settle business deals, business opportunities. You, work on, you can settle them better. You can reflect confidence. You work with confidence and you can be decisive as well. So here comes an interesting trick. Look how beautiful this is. This is what I call the Batari box. So if you really would like to improve your assertiveness, communication, relationship, I like you to remember these four squares. Always think about what is it that affects my attitude? You see, it all starts there. How do you think about yourself? Your attitude makes a difference. So always ask yourself, what's affecting my attitude? If you are able to control those things that affect your attitude and replace them with the behavior that you like, then your attitude will affect your behavior. Did you see that? Look, affecting my attitude will affect my behavior. And when my behavior is affected the right way, I start impacting the uh, attitude of others. And when my attitude of others is impacted, okay, others start changing their behavior toward me and toward many things. And when others' behaviors start changing, I also start changing my attitude. Did you see the cycle? It's an ongoing cycle. It's a positive cycle. Now, can this Petari box work negatively? Of course. Of course it can. Because we have been around negative people and we go into a downward spiral. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to take the higher road. I want you to take the, the positive spiral. Focus on your attitude. How does my attitude focus my behavior? If I change my behavior. How does my behavior impact others? And how does others impact their behavior? And then on and on. So that is why it's extremely important that you start with yourself. If you want to become better at communication and building relationships, the story starts with your attitude. How, how do you think about yourself? That's what we call the Bitari box. This is something you can take with you and practice as out of today. So that being said, it's very important that when you are, when you work on yourself, always think about building rapport. You might say, Jamal, I heard of the word rapport, but I don't know what it is. Well, it's like perception, impression. So when you become a better communicator and better at building relationships, trust me, people like you. 
So you're building rapport, you see? Building rapport that means that people like you, likability factor. And the art of building rapport with any person will help you with that, and you can master it with certain strategies and techniques. Yes, anything on soft skills or hard skills, you can teach yourself, you can develop it. So building rapport can also be taught in a very in many ways, okay? And that is why it's important that you think of it from that perspective. And this is why I like to share with you the following slide. So the rapport is the development of a stronger connection between two people or more. Have you ever had the opportunity where, you know, one of your colleagues comes to you and says, you know what, I visited this customer and they asked about you. What does it mean that they asked about you? This means that you left rapport, they like you. You visited them before and you left in a strong impression and they asked about you. I said, you know what, how's Talal doing? This means that they miss you. That's rapport. It has to be between two or more. Otherwise, the rapport would be internal. So again, do you feel good about yourself? And I like you to feel good about yourself. So here comes the likability factor. So part of developing rapport is that you develop likability between you and other people. Now, it is not easy to develop it, and but it's not that hard. Well, I mean, if you work on it, people start liking you. One thing that I like to tell you how to become likable is listen. It's as simple as that. Just simply by listening to others and being able to, you know, give and take and understanding other people's point of view, people start liking you. It's just simple as that. However, you need other things to work on because listening is only a small part of it. There are other things that you have to work on as well. So, there is certainly not a definitive correlation. Plenty of successful people are not well liked by the masses. It makes sense that if you have what it takes to be successful and you're likable, your success is going to be even more. Okay? So likability or building rapport is important and helps in pushing your career forward. Now, the likability factor, most of us can benefit from making ourselves a little bit more likable. As I said, you listen to others, you empathize with others, you ask the right questions, you share your opinion in the right way, all of these things, and you still can be assertive, believe it or not. So let's see, maybe here some hints will help you in becoming more likable, and I'm confident you are, but let me remind you of some. First of all, it's a bit of a smile. Second, be sincere. You know, being sincere is wonderful. Better of good news. Be a positive person. Attitude. Make people happy. Use proper language. You see this thing? Remember organization? When you organize your brain, you use the right language. Expose yourself more. Volunteer here. Help here. Let people see you. It's called the likability factor. And I like to add number eight. Be a good listener. Listening is very important as well. So, let's move on to our Third question, I hope you're ready, relating to hearts and mind. You have to pay attention to the powers and interests when managing stakeholders, true or false. So let me see, survey over here. This is question number three. I want to wish you all the best. Good luck with this. All right, go ahead and answer. Okay. Very good, very good. Excellent input. You have to pay attention to the powers of interests when managing stakeholders. Very good, very good. I will give you another 15 seconds just to make sure that everybody is able to participate. Very good. And another five seconds, and then I will share the results. Very good, excellent, excellent. So I'm gonna end the voting now. Oh, one person came in at the end, that's fantastic. 
So here we go. Now I'm going to end the voting. I'm going to share the results. All right. So for those of you who said true, well done. Okay. It is important that you pay attention to powers and interest. Remember the key word there. It's a stakeholders. And when you are working with relationships and communication, stakeholders are all around you. And you are one of the stakeholders, by the way. But be careful. This is very important. You have to pay attention to the powers and interests in the room. Okay? This is an essential part of you becoming influential and persuasive. So thanks to all of you. Well done to all of you for answering, participating. Let me close this one. I'm going to go now to my presentation and push forward. So now, here we go. Now, can you imagine the number of stakeholders? When you are working on a project, an initiative, activity, your stakeholders can come from any one of these mentioned there. It could be your boss, senior executive, yes, co-workers, team members, family, future recruits, interest groups, press, media. You know, with the COVID-19, we saw so many stakeholders. Everybody was participating. Everybody was lots of stakeholders. The COVID-19 pushed lots of stakeholders to the forefront. And of course, the government was trying to manage all these different stakeholders. The same thing in your company. You have an initiative. You have to take care of, of the different departments that you are working with. Stakeholders. Now, stakeholders can either stop your, the success of your project or they can push the success of your project. Why? It depends on how you communicate and how to build relationships. But when it comes to stakeholders, you have to remember the power and the interest. So whenever we deal with stakeholders, you also have to remember two things. How powerful these people are. What interest do they have? Because when we are dealing with this matrix of powers and interest, you can classify people into four areas. Some of them you have to manage very, very, very closely. These are the people with high power and high interest, like your boss, for example. But some people don't have much power, but they're interested. So you have to keep them in the loop, as they say. Some people have lots of power, but they don't have interest. Well, these people might become your manager one day. So make sure that you keep an eye on them and talk to them and let them know what's going on, for example. And some people, as I said, they have both. So those who have powers and interest, you have to build relationship with them and keep them posted and communicate with them very, very closely. So that is why communication relationship with stakeholders is very critical. And this means that you have to think of four steps. First, always plan your approach to stakeholders management. How do I approach a certain person, especially if they have high power and high interest? Then, step number two, think through what you want from each stakeholder. Oh, Jamal, I didn't know that managing stakeholders can be this complicated. It's not complicated. It's thinking strategically about your relationship with people. Now, you might say, but he's my friend. That's true. He is your friend. But at the end of the day, it is important that when you are thinking from a wider scope, there are certain people who have interest in your project or they may have power. So step number one, plan your approach. Step number two, think what you want from each stakeholder. Three, define the message. Imagine, how do you talk to them? What do you want to tell them? And number four, what do you want the actions and the communications needed? What are they? What do you want from them? When you tell them something, do you want them to do something, approve something, decide something? You see how important managing stakeholders is? You see, that's why this webinar, when we call it communication and relationship management, it's not only to say, can I talk better? I would like you to think wider. How I become more influential, more persuasive? How can I get my projects done? How can I get an approval going? Because at the end of the day, our success in a company does depend on managing these stakeholders. Very good. Now, that being said, the process of managing stakeholders is an activity of communicating and managing expectations, of course. Now, sometimes you say, but Jamal, come on, expectations and relationships. Yes, if you manage expectations well, relationships become stronger. If you manage concerns well, relationships become stronger. 
if you're able to address the issues and the conflicts, relationships become stronger and the other way around. If you fail in all of these things, forget the relationship. And if you communicate better around these things, you succeed. And if you communicate badly, you know, people probably will stay away from you. So the process is generally based on holding communication to get some feedback and give feedback, update, make sure that people know what's going on. This is very critical in your life. So whenever you take on a project, always remember that you have to manage expectations. And at the heart of the expectations, definitely you have the trust, but we mentioned that the trust is not going to come without communication and building relationships. So that takes us to the following. When reporting to stakeholders, it's important to remember that executives aren't interested in how you're doing it. They want to see results. So also this means that when you're communicating with them, make sure that you know what you're communicating. Everybody wants to hear what's interesting for them. And most of the time, your executive level team want to hear results. Now, so how to manage expectations of stakeholders? One, make sure that your business success or project success is clearly defined. Managing expectations, you see? If you know what makes that project successful and you define it very well, and you tell people how, then you're managing expectations. Don't make stakeholders wait too long before they start to see value. What does it mean? When you have a project, don't wait a year before you tell them how it is going. Divide your project into smaller chunks, and after a month, tell them, look, guys, we've done this. But don't wait them, make them wait a year. Third, execute against the objectives to ensure that the project is successful. And number four, keep it simple. Please, as much as possible, don't try to use complex communication. Use simple communication. It will make a whole difference in your life and the life of people around you. So, this means that you have to sell your ideas. Believe it or not, you have to sell ideas. And you have to be, and this takes you a long way. And because if you sell ideas, you sell your ideas correctly and you manage expectations correctly, people will help you and assist you. Throughout your, their career, they need to sell, you need to sell your ideas, whether with customers or inside the company, because you have customers inside and you have customers outside. So as much as it would be nice to have a standard formula for it, unfortunately, this is something that will develop with situations that you face. As you explore and experience more and more, you start developing how, what's the best way to develop my style of selling ideas. However, it's important to keep that in mind. When we try to persuade others of our idea, okay, you're asking them to change their ways of doing things. So you have to do some persuasion. You have to evoke the emotions. Remember Aristotle, what he said? He said, focus on the pathos, not only you know the ethos and the logos. For, don't forget the pathos. So you have to speak the emotions because when you're asking somebody to do something different, you have to change their behavior or you're impacting their behavior. And change is not easy. Change is never easy. You know, we've been through three months with COVID-19 and we were, you know, cooped up in our homes and we couldn't go back and forth. It, was, it wasn't easy. This change that COVID-19 forced on us wasn't easy at all. So imagine if you're telling somebody at work to change their behavior or do something or do that, something with a task and, do, and, and perform a task differently. So that is why it's very important to be persuasive and using the assertive approach behind it. So getting people to agree with you may require a lot more than just talking to them. You see, it's not like I talked to him or her and that's it. Or I sent an email. Oh, my goodness. How many emails have we sent? And nobody reads them simply because it's not enough. It's not enough, enough to talk to a person. It's not enough to send an email. You have to come across and persuade, convince, and let them understand why it's important to them as much as it is to you. And this is something I'm going to be talking about in the next few slides. But before I do that, remember, here are some tips to get the people to agree with you. Be clear. Ah, communication. Organize your thoughts. Be clear. Ask questions and listen. Ask the right questions and listen to what they want to say. Establish the foundation for an agreement. You know, is this what you're trying to say? Yes. Oh, okay. So that's one thing we agree on. 
and the more you things you agree on the better it is use inclusive words instead of saying i want i do say we want we like involve them in the process pay attention to your timing oh my goodness how many times have i seen people send a message at the wrong time Meh. it's very important you time it the right way don't lose the impact of your message by sending it the wrong time say it at the right time it makes a difference it keeps it makes a huge impact and be open to changing your own mind of course don't be stubborn because sometimes people like to share their opinion and i tell you one thing some people are very smart and because they are concerned they might share some opinion so be open to some ideas and this is why reframing your message is important sometimes you come across and you want to say something you say it and you wonder why did this person get upset well because you said it the wrong way you see how you say it makes a whole difference in your life it helps in building relationships when you say it the right way people respond in a positive way but when you say it the wrong way even though you don't mean it people will run away from you even though you don't mean it remember so reframing the message always before you say it can i say it better can i say it in a positive way and remember the word context here you see the context man i tell you in my life i i, I realized how context is important what's context the perspective that you are addressing a topic sometimes we forget that we are in COVID 19 situation it happens to us that sometimes i am not feeling very well i'm a bit depressed and here comes somebody and says it in a way that doesn't match the perspective of what we're going through it says well where have you been which plant did you come from you see the context is very important and when we understand the context it helps us in framing that message better i mean sometimes it happens that a friend of yours loses a loved ones and you come and you give it to them in a harsh way i mean if you put change your context said, wait a second that person had just lost a person you reframe the message you think about it differently you see that context is very important so that being said reframing especially critical and helps build acceptance and it, when you reframe the conversation the conversation becomes better and it you, you create a niche for yourself it says man this guy this lady is a phen phenomenal when it comes to these things why because in the workplace you will always deal with difficult people no matter what you do how nice you are how good you are there will always be somebody that's going to be a difficult person it's not your fault by the way believe it or not it's not your fault that person ha may have some issues could be from their past could be from the school could be from the way they raised but you still have to deal with these difficult people whether you like it or not because you want your project done you want your task done so this means that you know as amy cooper mentioned you have to become somehow an expert in employee employee or employer employee relationship the biggest issues stem from improper communication and poor tactics poor tactics wonderfully said this is a very good book by the way working with difficult people and if you know how to work with difficult people you can work with anybody so when we are working notice difficult people from come from different angles you have the tacklers the minute you say something they attack the enviers they envy you intimidators they try to push you back imposers they like to impose their idea you mentioned something and this is only a small sample of difficult people but if you communicate well and you build relationship well i tell you you can handle any one of them so i want to make sure that you understand that communication relationship management is essential in everything that you do including the difficult people you have to deal with at the end of the day if you don't handle these difficult people and difficult topics you will have more resistance you will have resentment and you will have retaliation now here comes the building relationships and influencing relationships building and influencing relationships now here comes my fourth question power is voluntary while influence is forced true or false 
So here it comes with the survey. Question number four. Here we go. Let's go ahead and vote. Let's see. Power is voluntary while influence is forced. Oh, very nice, very nice. Some people have managed to spot it. That's very good. I'm very proud of you guys. Well done. Well done. How about if we give everybody 20 seconds just to make sure that we have as much participation as possible. We have a couple of colleagues who usually, you know, like to think about it. So I want to give them a chance as well. Another 10 seconds. How about that? All right. We're almost, almost there. So just bear with me. Almost there. I hope that you're enjoying the webinar. I hope that you're finding it useful. Okay. So now I'm going to end the voting. And I want to apologize for those of you who weren't able to. Okay. And I'm going to share the results. So for those of you who said true, I'm sorry. But for those, those of you who said false, that you're right. Power is forced. Influence is voluntary. This is very important. And I'll explain it in a minute. Let me close this one, move into my presentation, and I'll tell you what the difference is. So now, what am I talking about? So when it comes to power, okay, and influence, they both refer to a possessed trait, trait a characteristic that you may have. And usually they go with authority. When you give somebody authority, either they exercise power or they exercise influence. The difference lies in how you use them, okay? Some people like to, you know, encourage people. Some people like to boss people around. So it's very important to remember that power can be defined as the following, the authority to change the behavior of others. Authority. Do this or else. You see how it is forced? The trouble with power is that for the group, there is no alternative but to comply. And when you're complying, because, you know, despite yourself, it's a forced relationship. You're not happy. But when you influence people, it's a completely different game. Influence is defined the ability to alter other people's perception of a situation. Alter, not force. Influence makes use of positive language and subtle behaviors to encourage the desired outcome. You see? So there's a big difference between power and influence. And I want you to remember that. Because power uses threats, punishment, to get somebody to complete the work, while influence uses positive affirmation, encouragement, to get someone to complete the work. Do we have to use force sometimes? Yes. You will find in your life that you may have to use force, but use it wisely, please. If you don't use it wisely, it may fire back and it may leave a wrong impression about you. So, this person I admire tremendously. In addition to Dr. Hakim, who I shared with you the book before, this is another author. His name is Dale Carnegie. He left us with some outstanding work around building relationships with people and how to communicate. And his common sense advice says never criticize or complain or com about or condemn another person but give sincere appreciation. You see, his, he developed kind of a school in, in how to deal with people, and I really, really respect him. And even though he wrote a book a while back, this book's still a top seller. The book that he wrote is called How to Win Friends and Influence People. He wrote it in 1936, that yet it is one of the best-selling books. And he tells you that it's so important that you how to deal with people. Always think of people positively. And I please buy the book if you could. Or at least download a, an electronic copy, PDF copy, and read it. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. It will make a huge difference in your life. So he is mainly known, okay, um, he is started with training, funny enough, and he produced some you know, improvement manual and everything uh, in his life to help people to become better. But he believed that criticism should never be used because people who are criticized tend to respond by justifying themselves and condemning the critical person in return. Great leaders such as Abraham Lincoln and Carnegie believed partly achieved their success because they never criticized others. Instead, 
he recommends to practice self-control, understanding, and forgiveness. Wow, wow. And I think that if we do that, or at least a big chunk of it, it will make a huge difference in our communication and relationship management. So, most importantly, what did he advise? He advised that try to see the other person's point of view. We call it empathy. And if we empathize with others, we are able to influence them better. If we listen to them very closely, we can influence them better. So the dynamics, and this is where it comes in. I told you, I promised you that I'm going to talk about what's in it for me, what's in it for us. So when you are working with people, you have to think of what's in it for this person to do the job or what's in it for the team to do the job. So a good manager, a successful manager, when he is dealing or she is dealing with a person, it's important to understand their point of view. Why would they do it in the first place? Is it because they're going to succeed, uh, pro get promoted, learn something new? And the same thing applies to a team. But just remember, in a team, you have many people. And the thing about it is that you have to tackle the common goal of the people. So this is where you talk what's in it for us. And that is why when you are dealing with people, it's very important to think of what's in it for us. Especially if you put a team together, make sure you remember the common goal. Because there are many factors that result in a team becoming highly productive. The most important one is how to bind them, bind them, get them together behind the common goal. What's in it for us? Success, recognition, promotion, bonus, whatever it is. So, it is very important that teams that work well together, they enjoy strong relationships. And most people and business prefer to do business today with people and employees who are happy. So how you communicate and build relationships with teams and individuals makes a huge difference in their happiness level in the organization. This takes me to the almost final uh, slides. Remember, I'm not saying that you have to develop all the relationship has to be deep relationships, no. Some relationships are going to be transactional. Transactional means you focus on the outcome more than you focus on the whole relationship. And that's something that's okay. For example, you go to the gold souk, you go to a jewelry shop, you go to a, uh, um, a class in a university, you meet a customer. Sometimes the relationship is very superficial, transactional. I sell, I come, and I go back. That's it. And you never see them again. But some relationships are much stronger than them. It's called relational. Some relationships are very competitive. You fight with your friend. But some relationship you collaborate and you work with your friends. So some of them are transactional, very superficial, but some others are relational. So in a relationship, you care about the outcome, but you also care about the others. You see the difference? In a transactional, it is mostly, did it satisfy my demands? But in a relational, did it satisfy our demands? So, it's about moving the needle toward a bit more business-appropriate self-disclosure. Consciously producing more powerful contacts. Again, the contacts, you see? The contacts coming back again. Which perspective are you addressing the situation from? So, context has everything to do with the why. Why am I talking to this person? Why am I building relationship with this individual? This is, the, this is something I would like you to start asking yourself, the why. The why is very, very advanced level in relationships. Now, so it's only natural that you ask for feedback in a relationship, and that's something that happens all the time. However, feedback, you have to be careful how to ask for feedback. Here are some tips. One is play the long game. What does it mean? Don't take everything as it is for today. No. Think about it, how can I improve myself for the future? Listen up, listen carefully to the feedback. Give and you shall receive. As much as you like to give feedback, you have to expect feedback in return. Acknowledge and respond. Thank you for your feedback, I appreciate it. And start working on it. Because this feedback is part of building the relationships that you would like to develop. It's investing in relationship. When somebody is giving you feedback, you are investing in a relationship. This is very, very critical. And when you invest in a relationship, you know, you move from the transactional to the relational. You start getting stronger and stronger relationship in your workplace.
And this is why a transformer relationship focuses on the bigger picture. A relational or transformer relationship focus on collaboration, motivation, working together, our success. Last but not least, I would like to remind you of something very important. I know all of us face negative relationships. I know. But some negative relationships are a worthwhile saving. But some negative relationships, think about divesting if it has certain characteristics. You will deal with negative relationships, and if you are successful, yes, you will salvage them. Why? Because you become better at communication and relationship. Remember, relationship means two sides. Maybe you are contributing to the negative relationship. But when a relationship you know, becomes too negative, then I would like you to remember certain things. Look at this. You should consider seriously divesting in relationship from a relationship if there is physical, mental, emotional, sexual abuse. If this exists, get out. Aggravating your life, get out. You are living under duress all the time, get out. It's wasting your time, don't waste your time anymore. It's not what you thought, it happens. I meet a lady that I like, I. I thought that she was a lovely lady, I want to marry her, and then all of a sudden I realized this was not it. Fine, it happens. It's not the end of the world. But if it's worth salvaging, do it. If you think that the relationship is worth salvaging, please do it. But if it is, you feel that no out of it, then it happens. So, also be careful of if they're messing your emotions, try to fix it. But if it is continuous, like some, I have, I have read about some bosses who make your life miserable. I tell you, some people leave the workplace. Say, you know what? I'm living under this pressure all the time. Or, you know, there's no passion in that relationship. And so on and so forth. So, some relationships are definitely worth saving. But some relationship, it's better to pull out. Divest in relationship. Because I would like to give you a balanced approach about relationships. Last but not least, let's talk about networking. Here comes the question. Developing a network can help increase my confidence. Let's see if we can do the survey and the last question. And here we are. Please go ahead and vote. Very good, very good. Ah, excellent. Developing a network can help increase your confidence. Ah. Thank you. Thank you all for your feedback today and for your presence. This is wonderful. Excellent participation. I'll give everybody another 15 seconds just to be on the safe side. Some of you are looking at the watch and says, ah, I thought it's only one hour. My apologies. I want to apologize. So, excellent. Another 10 seconds. All right, five seconds, and I'm going to end the voting, and I'm going to share the results. So all of you said true, and I want to thank you. Well done. Well done. It is true. So let me go back to the presentation, wrap up. So, my dear friends, it's worthwhile to build relationships. Why? Because we are human beings. We are human beings, so we build relationships. And when it comes to building networks today, you know, we can build networks. And some of them are really good. We can stay in touch with our friends, classmates, colleagues, or other professionals as well. So develop your network. Please invest in it. And the other thing that I would like you to keep in mind, there are many benefits of building a network. Whether it is referrals that you want for your business, connections you want to develop, raising your profile, increasing confidence, friendships, opportunities, advice, positive influence, satisfaction. I tell you, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I write articles and I have a good connection. I have a good network now. And I tell you, sometimes lots of people give me advice and I want to thank them for that. And sometimes I also give advice and they thank me for the effort. So if you're interested in joining my network, please do so. But all I'm saying is that develop your network. It is worthwhile to always invest in a good network. This means that you have to think strategically. 
it's very important that you think strategically about your network okay and now you have access to information and networks all over the place and you can have friends and colleagues all over the place so the main thing to remember don't let your personal network just happen to you it's not going to happen just you're sitting there waiting for people to connect build it strategically say you know what i like to know more about the car industry visit a website uh, know a person lots of people about the car indices are on linkedin or other famous networks the same thing if you want to know more about medical field the same thing if you want to know about you know business development or marketing find your passion develop networks okay identify and recruit the right people into your network and start developing relationship with them you never know when this network is going to come back it's part of building relationships and networking so professional networking is about real relationships and real trust so be, be careful, I'm gonna give you a word of advice. If you really would like to use your network, you have to come across as trustworthy. So don't lie about who you are. Say it as it is, but develop yourself. And it's very important to develop these connections if you want to use that to develop your network. At the end, it is important to build networks. It is challenging, could be time consuming, but it will help in your personal profile and for example, as I said, LinkedIn is a good place. It helps with your brand if you're into branding yourself. Uh, you can do it through conferences and events. You can do it through volunteering, social media as well. And when you travel as well, it's always worthwhile. Well, this is my story for today. I want to thank all of you for being patient with me. Okay, this is my email over here. This is our website. LinkedIn is right over there. We do have a course public coming up in November. If you're interested, please register for it. If you need my help, let me know. Other than that, I want to thank you from the heart. This is a uh, wonderful, wonderful time I spent with you today. And here are some references for you. So in case you'd like to read more about this topic, do so. Here are crucial conversations. I tell you, I love this book. And you can get it in audio as well. And The Fine Art of Small Talk, oh, beautiful book, beautiful book by Deborah Fine. How to Win Friends and Influence People, our friend Dale Carnegie, right? And some other beautiful books there. Get them, read them, always develop yourself. God bless, and I hope to see you in future webinars. Thank you so much, and all the best. Bird.com